A lot of people talk about risk and managing risk in your trades, but what does that really mean? What action do you need to take to make that happen? Our guest today is Mike Radke. He's going to talk to us about that. Mike, thanks for being here. Thanks for having us here. And uh, risk is a very important tool to talk about every day. We had just did a, a seminar where I had people raise their hands and say, how much of you are at least taking the high of the day minus the low of the day and figuring out what was that worth on a one lot, a 10 lot, or a 1,000 lot in trading? And only maybe 1%, 2% of their people raised their hands that they actually did that. And it was really something that's really driving us because no one's really concentrating on risk. And even back in the 80s when we're listening to people like Paul Tudor Jones speak, he was talking about that people just focus on how much they want to make, not what they're exposed to. And the point is doing something very simple is just taking the high minus low, and you can figure out what that dollar value was per the contract size you trade, and you just figure it out, and they're just not doing it. And that's what we're trying to do. We're just trying to help people with that. So is it a matter of basically taking the average true range of, uh, of, of given security and figuring out if it can move more or less of that? Um, uh, explain how that works. Well, it could be even more simple than that. I mean, you could get into, you know, some complicated formulas and all, but it's basically how high did the market travel in a day and how low did it travel in a day? And basically, see, that's your exposure in that 24 hours of what would have happened. And we're not always going to buy the high and sell the low. We're going to be a little bit better than that. But the point is, is that it just could be simply that there's four key components people always talk about, the open, high, low, and the open, high, low, and close. They don't talk about just the range as much and not only and when they do they don't put a dollar value on it and people just need to know what they're aware of and it because all of a sudden as soon as you kind of have an idea what's what your risk is uh, the anxiety level just drops and you say all right I know I could handle a thousand dollars I could handle two thousand dollars you make that agreement before the trade even happens and all of a sudden you become a more non-emotional trader and you could basically make some clear decisions do you advocate trying to determine the risk to reward ratio before you get in on every single trade absolutely um, that Hands down, I mean, my personal risk tolerance is I never want to lose more than 5% of my account in a day. But I don't risk 5% of my account on a trade. I've, I pretty much see about one to four opportunities in a day. And I'll allocate about 1.25% of my account, a quarter of that 5% on the idea. And hands down, I don't care if I'm bullish, bearish, if the market just wasn't happening and it hits 1.25%, I'm out. So I definitely, I prepare for that ahead of time, but I balance it with what the market generally is going to throw over me in a 30-minute period or an hour or two hours or a 24-hour span. Does that mean for stop losses for you, you automatically calculate it at 1.25% below what the current price is for, for your account? Yeah, so like, you know, for me, I'll hold on to trades, most of my trades between 15, 30 minutes, no more than generally about an hour of time. So I'll calculate how far that market generally runs in that 30 minutes or an hour of time. I'll adjust my contract size according to what that market's been doing and that based upon that idea and balancing that with 1.25 percent of my account so when I have my personal risk tolerance met and then I have the market tolerance met and I meet them in the middle and everything's jiving I make better decisions Mike thanks for your time thanks for having us